In this video, we're going to learn about threads in C. First, we'll talk about what threads are, and then we'll create a C program that uses threads. So a regular C program is what we could call a single threaded program, where we have one sequence of statements that executes over time. A multi-threaded program has multiple sequences of statements that execute over the same period of time. So here we have two streams of statements essentially being executed over the same period of time. Now, multi-threaded programs can execute in parallel or they can execute concurrently. If we have two threads that are executing statements at the same moment in time, like this moment in time and this moment in time, we would say they're executing in parallel. It's not always possible for threads to execute in parallel. Sometimes the hardware and software does not support that. So if the CPU can only execute one thread at a time, what will happen instead is concurrent execution, where the CPU will switch back and forth between executing multiple threads. So even though the threads here are executing over the same period of time, at any particular moment in time, only one of the threads is executing, and the CPU is switching between them. Now that's a whole process that we could get into in computer science and the development of operating systems and CPUs, but that's the idea. We could have concurrent or parallel execution. Now, whether the threads execute in parallel or merely concurrently, there's a potential for an improvement in performance. That's why people bother with threads. Threads add a layer of complexity, but sometimes it can be worth it if the performance of our program improves by using threads. So when we go over our C program example, we'll go over a performance example as well. Now, in terms of how to create threads in C, we're gonna use the pthread library. And the way the pthread library works is we call pthread create to create a thread. And we give it a function that we wanna run. That function will run in its own thread. Now to join this thread back with the main thread, we're gonna use pthread join. And pthread join is gonna pause and wait here until this thread has completed its work. Now it's possible by the time pthread join runs, the thread has already completed its work. But if the thread hasn't completed its work, by the time pthread join runs, execution will just pause here and wait for it to complete its work. But that's the main idea with pthreads is we create the thread, it runs a function, and then we can join this thread back with our main thread of execution using pthread join. So let's implement this now in C. So the first thing we'll do is include pthread.h, also known as the POSIX thread library. And then we'll make a pthread underscore t variable. We'll say pthread underscore t thread one. And we're gonna use this to create and manage our thread. Now pthread create is going to run a function in a separate thread. So we're gonna to have to create a function. We'll make a simple one. We'll say void star computation. So the function has to return a void pointer. We'll copy and paste this and we'll provide a simple definition of the function. We'll just printf computation backslash n. And because we have to return something here, we're gonna return null. Now let's use pthread create to run this function in a separate thread. We'll say here, pthread create and thread one null computation and null. So what's going on here is we're passing in a pointer to our pthread underscore t variable. The second argument here, null, that could be used to set attributes of the thread. We're not gonna use it in this video though, because we're just kind of introducing the concept. The third argument is the function itself, computation. And the fourth argument could be used to pass arguments to this function. Then we'll use pthread join to join this thread of execution back with our main thread when it's done. So we'll say pthread underscore join thread one null. So the first argument is the thread that we're joining with this main thread of execution. 
And the second argument could be used to work with the return value from that function. So we'll save this and we'll try to compile it and run it. So we compile it here and we run it and we get computation. We could also pass an argument to this computation function. And the expectation is that the argument is going to be a void pointer. Now we could use a void pointer to pass in a value via a pointer or pass in something like a struct via a pointer to that struct. So for example, let's say I have a long value one variable set to one, and I want to pass in value one's value one. We can do that with a void pointer. So here we'll say void pointer and value one. So we're getting the memory address of value one, and then we're casting it to a void pointer. Now our computation function can accept a void pointer as an argument. So here we'll say void star add. And we can use this void pointer to ultimately get at this value here. So down here we'll say void star add then we'll say long star add num is equal to long star add. So what we're doing here is we're taking this void pointer add that we know we're being passed in and we're casting it to a long pointer. And then here I could use the dereference operator to actually output the value. So we'll say add percent LD and then we'll dereference add num. So let's try to compile and run our program now. So we'll save it and we'll compile it and we run it and we get add one. If I change value one to five here, we save it, recompile it and run it. We now get add five. So now I'm passing in a value to the function. And it's a little bit of a roundabout way in the sense that we're passing in a void pointer to the variable that stores that value. And then we're having to typecast the pointer and then dereference the pointer in order to get the value. But this is a technique we can use to pass arguments to the function. Now we could run multiple threads. I'll copy and paste this and we'll say pthread underscore t thread two. We'll make another long value as well. We'll say long value two is equal to two. And we'll set the first one equal to one. And now we'll create two threads. So I'll copy and paste this and I'll say and thread two. And we'll pass in a pointer to value two. And then we'll say p thread join. And we'll also join thread two. So we can save this, do a recompilation and run it. And now we get add one and add two. And that's because we've called the computation function twice with two different values running in two different threads. Next, let's try to have the computation function do some more substantial work so we can do a performance test to see the effect of running the computation function in multiple threads versus a single thread. So we'll have the computation function do a sum. We'll say long sum is equal to zero. And we'll make a loop here. We'll say for long i is equal to zero. i is less than one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's a lot of zeros there. And then we'll increment i. And we'll add to sum the dereferenced add sum. So the value we've passed in essentially via the pointer. So we'll save this here. And then up here, we're going to try something different. Instead of using pthread create to create two threads to run our computation function, we're going to try to run the computation function directly twice, one after the other. So we'll comment out this momentarily. And we'll say computation 
void star and value one. And then we'll run the function again with value two. So we'll save this here and we'll do a compilation and we'll call the executable S for single threaded. So we've got an error here. Oh, I called it add sum instead of add num. My mistake. So we'll save that, do a clear, recompile. And now we have an executable S that's going to run the computation function twice, one after the other in a single thread. Let's see how long this takes. We'll say here time dot slash S. And the first time it runs, it might take a little bit of time. We get 4.77 seconds there. Let's try it a few more times though. It looks like that's going to be about the time. So about five seconds there. We'll try it one more time just to get a sense of how long it takes to run in a single thread. Okay. So 4.5 seconds. So between 4.5 and about five seconds to run the function twice, one after the other in a single threaded C program. What if we go back to this version now where we run the computation function in multiple threads? Let's compile this version of the program. We'll call it M for multiple threaded. Let's try to time the execution of this program. We'll say time dot slash M. And look at this 2.591 seconds. We'll try it a few more times. 2.467 seconds. And one more time. 2.488 seconds. So while this isn't a scientific test, we can see that the multi-threaded program is running roughly twice as fast as a single threaded program. And that makes sense because we have two threads now running concurrently. And in this case, it looks like they're running in parallel as well. Now, one thing we should try is this. I'm going to try to join thread one before starting thread two. Let's see what effect this has on the runtime. We'll compile this again, and now we'll try running it. And it seems to be taking a longer time. We're back to about four and a half seconds here. We'll try it one more time. And again, we're back to about four and a half seconds here. So what's going on is that if we do it this way, it might as well be a single threaded program because we're creating a thread to run computation, but then we wait here. So remember P thread join is going to wait until this thread is done its work. So here we're saying call computation, run it in its own thread, but wait here until it's done. Then we create thread two, and then we wait for thread two to complete its execution right after effectively running one computation function followed by the other, just like in the single threaded program. So this has been an introduction to using threads in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.